Okay. All right, well, time to piss off all the neighbors again. So what's going on guys? My name is Sean. I am here with Riley. Hi guys. And today I just kind of wanted to film a video um, giving some helpful tips for people who are trying to get into automotive photography or any sort of photography really. So me and Riley are actually about to go to a parking garage to take some pictures for ourselves. So more specifically, we are going to be taking pictures of the new RP Productions merchandise, which is available on my website at becauseracecarstore.com. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So tip number one is going to be your location. So right now, me and Riley are pulling up to uh, the UTSA parking garage, as you can see here. And we are using it as our location mainly because, well, one, there's a great view of the city and everything that surrounds us. But more importantly, it's somewhat isolated from everybody else around us and there won't be a ton of things getting in the way or bothering us while we're trying to take these pictures. You were saying? <laughs> yeah, so the last time we came to this parking garage, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> it was to film a video for Riley and it was kind of packed honestly. I think it was because it was a Thursday and so people were still at school, I don't know. But now as you can see, there's virtually nobody here, which is great for us. But yeah, tip number two is going to be the time of day and using the sun to your advantage. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah, this is great. They got actually like, is there, I don't think there's a single person up here. No. Hell yeah. Last time there was like 10 cars up here. It's all ours. It's lit. All ours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually built this parking garage just for us. Mm -hmm. That's what they don't want you guys to know. I'm going to take my RP Productions uh, profile picture real quick. Okay. Behind the scenes, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is what people don't see. This is how Riley takes his uh, profile picture. He's got a nice little squat going on. Beautiful. So while Riley's over there cleaning his car and trying to get his new profile picture, um, I decided to come over here where there's this wall. It kind of is blocking the wind for me. But yeah, like I was saying, use the sun and the weather to your advantage as much as you can. Obviously, those kind of things will vary day by day. But the one thing that will stay mostly consistent is gonna be the sunset that you get or what many photographers refer to as golden hour. Speak of the devil. So yeah, me and Riley are both very hungry. It's like six o'clock prime time for dinner. But sometimes to get that perfect shot, you gotta make sacrifices that you're willing to make. So here we are at uh, six o'clock waiting for that perfect golden hour opportunity. Also, if you don't want to, or you're just not able to go out during golden hour and take those pictures, I definitely recommend going out when it's overcast. That way your pictures aren't too bright and like, it just tends to make your pictures come out a little bit better when the clouds are covering the sun up a little bit. All right, so we just moved locations. We're still in the parking garage, but we wanted to have a kind of a blank background here for the pictures of the shirts. So we're gonna be using Riley's camera to take these pictures and he's over here setting it up right now. All right, so me and Riley just finished up taking pictures. They turned out beautifully. And as you can see, it is beautiful out here right now. Can't complain. Golden hour is awesome. Okay, so now moving on to the third step, which is the rule of thirds. So we're gonna have Riley explain that for you guys right now. All right, so the rule of thirds is like a photography term. Now I'm not the best when it comes to photography, but I know a little bit. Uh, the rule of thirds is basically you want to separate your screen. Think of it as in thirds. So you have you know the left, the center, and the right. So a good example that we took today, you can see on the right, you know we have my big head, obviously, and over here on the left you can see the phone. So it's not all just focused right in the middle of the screen. You want to utilize both the left and the right. Don't just pick an object like let's say I was taking a picture of the Hellcat here and zoom in oh let me see and like well that yeah that looks pretty good just right on the middle you could also I'll show you you could also get a picture like this where as you can see it takes up about the right two-thirds of the screen so you have the center and the right with the focus of the vehicle and on the left you can kind of see just a little bit of blank space 
So, you know, that's a dead on shot versus using the rule of thirds. It just kind of makes your pictures look a little bit more planned out and you can kind of tell what's going on in the picture a little bit more. Uh, just one of those like little, little things that makes the picture a little bit better. Also, Sean just informed me this is kind of more directed towards like automotive photography. So for those of you who are into automotive photography and taking pictures of cars, you gotta learn which way to turn the wheels that can make or break a photo. So for example, if I was taking a picture of the car right here, uh, ideally I'd actually turn the wheels a little bit more and face them that way if I'm taking the picture from this angle. Also, same goes for if you're taking rear photography shots. Don't just have uh, like a basic rear photography shot with the wheels pointed forward. If you turn them in the direction that you're kind of wanting to focus the uh, camera, it looks a lot better instead of, you know, imagine if this was turned to the left instead of the right. It just would not look nearly as good. You'd see tire instead of wheel. You obviously want to see more wheel than tire. Um, so that's kind of like a little, oh, that looks a little bit better. And if you come over here, See, if you took the picture from this angle, all you see is tire. It doesn't look that good. All right, so it's starting to get a little bit dark now. So we are gonna go ahead and head back to the apartment and we will give you the final tip there. So we just got back to the apartment and Riley just looked through all the pictures. We had what, 250? 250. So 250, he narrowed it down to 25. So, but that's kind of another sub point there is narrow it down or take more pictures than you need and then narrow it down to like the best few. All right, so now for the final tip, edit your pictures. So editing your pictures does seem like an obvious step. However, doing so can definitely change your picture from something that's just average to something that's above average and looks really pleasing to the eyes and by editing we don't mean like go over the top and like do like photoshop and put in all these special effects and stuff like that we just mean simple stuff like changing the saturation contrast and highlights or whatever else and so right now we're going to show you two free and easy ways to get your pictures edited and looking great. So first I'm gonna show you Riley's online software and what he's using and let him kind of explain what it is and what it does so Riley What's going on, everybody? All right, Riley, so what are you using here? All right, guys, buckle up, here we go. So this is a website called befunky.com. It is a free website, you can go to it. I found it because I typed in free editing software on Google, and it was like the first or second one. Anyways, uh, so befunky is where I do all my picture editing. If you guys have ever been on my Instagram by chance, um, I like to think it has some pretty decent pictures. I don't use Photoshop or anything like that. It's literally just using this free website. And the cool thing about it, is it's really easy to use. I mean, you can go in here and uh, one of my, my favorite go-to buttons is over here when you click exposure and this button right here that says fill light, you can use that and it really changes a picture so you can go like really overboard. That's what it was when it was, you know, nothing was done to it. Um, so you can go in there and kind of just play with the stuff, but they make it super easy just to use these little dials more or less. Um, you know, the shadows, you can have it as dark as you want. The possibilities are pretty much endless and you can obviously go in here and jack up the saturation, the temperature, I mean, you can do anything you want with this software. Um, you can also crop it, resize it, everything uh, that you would need to do with a photo editing software. So yeah, befunky.com, it's free to use, that's what I use. Now we'll go to Sean's. So before we move on to what I'm using, this is after, before. After, before of what Riley uses. So that looks pretty freaking good. Look, makes it look a lot better and uh, would recommend. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to mine, I use an app called Adobe Lightroom. It is actually free on the App Store. I'm not sure about Android. Uh, it's probably free on that too. But it's actually really simple to use and I think it's one of the uh, best that you can get on the App Store, honestly. I used to use an app called Enlight. However, I moved over to this one just to try it out and see if I liked it and I kind of like it better. So this is what I primarily use to edit my pictures. And it's also really easy for me to do because my camera has Wi-Fi built in so I just kind of transfer it right over to my phone through the Wi-Fi and get them right on here and start editing. But yeah, iOS now has this recording feature on here so I'm gonna 
switch over to that to show you guys a little bit more in detail what it looks like. So now that we're in here, I will show you, here is the before and the after. So as you can tell, it looks a lot cleaner, a lot better. And so I'm not gonna go through everything like in depth, but here's kind of like the settings that I use to get this. So here's, you know, we go into light, I moved up the contrast, highlights down, the whites up a little bit, go into color. I messed with the temperature a little bit and the tint, not a lot. The vibrance a little bit, saturation a little bit. Clarity, dehaze, uh, the sharpening, and then that's, I think, about it. So yeah, if you want to get a free app that can edit your pictures for you, here's a good way to do it. All right guys, so I'm back in my room and the last final point I kind of wanted to make was don't limit yourself based on the type of camera equipment that you have or own. Obviously it's nice to have a you know nicer, higher end camera to take pictures with. It makes your life a little bit easier. However, you can still get really, really good pictures with an iPhone or an Android phone these days. Like it's pretty incredible. So don't limit yourself. And just to prove to you guys that you can get almost equally as good pictures with an iPhone as you can with my camera, which is a Panasonic G7. I went ahead and took two very similar pictures while we were on top of that parking garage earlier, one with my iPhone and one with my Panasonic G7. And I just edited them on the Lightroom app. So I'm gonna show you a little comparison here. So jumping back into my phone here, I'm gonna hit that record button. And we're recording, so check this out. Here is the before picture with the iPhone that I took. And here's the after. Now, moving over to this picture, this is the one I took with my Panasonic G7. Here's the after, before, after. So, swiping between them. As you can see, they're both really good pictures. The Panasonic one looks a little bit better, yeah, but not a ton, honestly. So, don't limit yourself, guys. If you have an iPhone 6 or any iPhone or Android phone, I'm sure you can take pretty good pictures. So go out there, um, take use of these tips, and have a good time. So yeah, that is all the tips me and Riley have for you today to help up your automotive photography game or any photography really in general. I hope this really helped you guys, and if it did, leave a like and comment below if you have any other suggestions or tips for people. And if you're new to the channel and wanna see more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It'll really help me out a lot, and I'll see y'all in the next one.